Welcome to this video series Road Design with Autodesk Civil 3D for absolute beginners. So if you are a beginner who is into Civil 3D learning and designing a road with Civil 3D software, this is a good place to start with. So as a beginner, I hope you have some kind of understanding in AutoCAD commands and tools before moving on to Civil 3D. So to work with this course, you need to download Civil 3D software basically you can download it from the autodesk civil 3d autodesk website in internet you can download the software by providing uh, educational details in the website so you will be have, you, have, you will have the chance to download the software for one year for free use so in this course we will be using civil 3d versions uh, versions 24 most of the time but I'll be using Civil 3D 2022 and so Civil 3D, Civil 3D 2020 version also when there is uh, changes in the versions. But basically, if you have your Civil 3D software, which is Civil 3D 2020, 2018 or a newer version, you can easily follow these uh, videos and complete the things. So then we will be working on the throughout these videos through some exercise files so once you download the exercise files you will get a folder like this yeah there you have all the uh, things you need to complete the work and there are some completed files in the downloaded folder so that if you stuck somewhere uh, and you cannot move forward you can use these completed files and move forward without stucking anywhere so this is how we going to use the software and how to designing a road properly as a beginner uh, with the civil 3d software and at the end of the software and oh and at the end of this video series i will be telling you what are the places where you can get more idea about the software and more details more resources to get more understanding about the software and road design with this software so i hope we will be having good time with the video series and i hope you will be learn many things related to the software and road designing using this video series in this section you will be getting some understanding about the exercise files we are using throughout this video series so once you have downloaded the exercise files uh, you will get something like this so you have to download the exercise files through the exercise file links at the description given here uh, underneath the video so once you download it you will get a file like this to extract this file you need a software called WinRAR or there are some other softwares also uh, to extract this type of file so once you have the WinRAR software, your uh, file will be like this. You have to download the WinRAR software first uh, and extract these files. So you have to right click here on the exercise files. Then you have to click extract here. So what the ex files will be extracted to a folder called exercise files. So once you double click on that one and open, you will have basic files which you will be using throughout this course so we will be starting from a template within civil 3d and while we are working on you need this topo survey points tie lines topo survey file and this image for clarification of cross sections and once you are working on the files uh, if you are stuck in somewhere i have included every file at each stage of completion so for example let us say you could not import the points properly or for some reason you uh, get with some error when you are importing the points so after importing points we will create the surface so you cannot create the surface without import points so to start uh, create surface section you can use this points imported file to move forward so so you will not be stuck anywhere in this video series because of these files uh, 
so that is how to use the exercise files and work with the software and with the video series in this section we are going to look at how to open the civil 3d version in your laptop or pc so to do that you need to install the software and you will have shortcuts of the software in your desktop uh, usually you will see two shortcuts one is for imperial version and the other one is for metric version so if you are using the units such as uh, inch feet you have to use civil 3d imperial version otherwise if you are using uh, your units as centimeters meters millimeters you have to use civil 3d 2024 metric version in this case so this whole videos are based on the metric version file so i am going to start or i am going to open this civil 3d 2024 metric version to open i'll double click the software and it will open the software once you double click and open the software you will get an interface like this so we call it the start window so depending on your civil 3d version this start window might be different than mine but it is more or less the same thing so after coming to the screen you have to open a new drawing or otherwise you can open a new template and save a new drawing in this case i am going to open a new template so to do that you can go to here or either here but uh, this place it will automatically populate or automatically pop up the last template you have used so if you want to use a new template it is good to go from here so we go to here and go to new here and it will go to the default template location on your uh, civil 3d folder so in here i will use this civil 3d metric ncs dwt template and i click open so now i have open a new template now after opening it the template becomes a drawing you can see here it says your drawing name is drawing 2 or the file name is drawing 2 now you can save this drawing as a drawing file so the best thing you have to memorize drawing files and drawing template is the extension of that drawing so i will show you what is them what is that later so now i am going to save this drawing to save this drawing i am going to use this save button since this has not been saved earlier it will let you uh, choose a file location to save the drawing in my case i am uh, saving in the exercise file location you have can use whatever the file location you like so i am saving this as sample drawing so you can see it says it is a dwg file that means a drawing file so if you need to save it as a template file you have to use dwt file so i am not going to use the dwt one i am going to use it as a sample drawing or dwg so i'll save this one now it will save as a drawing so after so saving this one you can close this one since it has been saved if you don't do any work if you do any other work inside this drawing you can again save it otherwise if you want to save it into another name you can use this save as option here so that is how to open a template and save a drawing now i am going to close this drawing so now after closing we will be back to the initial startup interface so if you want to open that drawing again either you can click in here or otherwise you can go to here and click open so it will go to the sample drawing location otherwise from here you can navigate to the file location so then you can click open to 
uh, open that drawing so that is how to open a drawing using the uh, civil 3d window so if you, if you haven't opened civil 3d window yet or if you haven't uh, open civil 3d yet you can always double click the drawing button and open it so i'll close this one for the moment so i will go to my sample drawing location and show you how to double click and open the drawing so now i am in the drawing folder so you can see the uh, version or the extension is dwg so if you can't see the extension you can go to the view tab and see check this one file name extensions then you will see the extension so now now i am going to double click this drawing and open the drawing so once you double click the drawing it will open in automatically civil 3d if your default uh, drawing weaving version is civil 3d so if your default weaving version of the drawing is autocad it will not open in civil 3d it will open in autocad in that case you have to go to the you have to first start the civil 3d and use this open option here oh i'll close this for the moment option option here to open the drawing so that is how you open a template save a drawing and again open that drawing in various ways to access the drawing in this section i am going to give you some understanding about some basic commands uh, and some tools and functionality where i will be using while doing this videos uh, so i wish if you follow this very closely you won't get complicated about the things i do during the uh, videos we are looking at in the upcoming sections so one thing is i hope you have basic understanding about autocad mostly civil 3d is based on autocad so all the basic civil 3d works are related to the basic AutoCAD works like copying, pasting, creating objects, everything. Apart from that, Civil 3D have more advanced features. So I want to make sure that you know about uh, object snapping. So like if you have turned up on object snapping and if you are going to create a polyline, for example, so if you have turned on object snapping and if you have snapped to endpoint and midpoint, I will remove these sections, endpoint and midpoint. So it will automatically snap to the end of the polyline when you are going to create a new one. It will snap to the center or actually middle of the polyline and the other end. If you want to create, create a new polyline from the middle of this polyline, you can create from here easily. So you can turn on off all the features so if you completely turn off object snap you can use this one if you want to turn on again you can click here so while in the command also you can turn on off these features then these are the auto polar tracking we will not be using much of this here and another uh, thing i have to tell you is the uh, dynamic input so if you type something on the command line it will type on the command line so if your dynamic is input is on whatever the things you type will be typed at the cursor location so to turn on dynamic input you have to press f12 on your keyboard f12 so if f12 is pressed so make sure that in some of your laptops to press f12 you need to press the function key as well so make sure you are using the proper keys to turn on the f12 functionality or the dynamic input functionality so now i have already pressed f12 on my keyboard so i'm typing polyline again now you can see the polyline or the command is typing at my cursor location so sometimes if you will be if you might be sometimes you might be get confused when the things typing at these locations you don't know how to uh, turn off or uh, avoid that kind of error so avoid that kind of problem so 
first of all you need to get understanding about these things so if i press k pen press f12 again now it will be turn off the dynamic input now it will be typing at the command line so uh, that is one of the things you have to have in your memory dynamic input and the other main thing i have to tell you is the selection cycling so if i go to here you will see i am selecting one line so there's a command called selection cycling in civil 3d and autocad as well so if you type this selection cycling and command now the current value is 2 minus 2 actually i'll set it to plus 2 plus 2 once you set it to plus 2 there's a comma uh, icon appearing here sometimes this icon may be here or may not be here depending on the version so actually not depending on the version it depends on the view setup so if you want to turn on off these things you can use these things here so selection cycling is currently turned on here that is why it is uh, showing here so if i click here it will be unchecked and it won't be shown here so i can show it here to make sure it is turned on so once you select the value to 2 you will see once you place the mouse cursor here you can see if you click here you can see there are two polylines here there are two polylines here so having selection cycling on make you better weaving of the overlapping objects sometimes in my work i'll be selecting the objects using this uh, selection cycling command so you have to make sure that you know that so those are the basic things you need to know at this point before uh, moving forward and apart from that i think you have some basic understanding about the autocad commands and functionality before uh, starting work in civil 3d in this section we are going to learn how to understand the interface of civil 3d so when you open the drawing and open a file you will get this kind of interface in the civil 3d version whatever the civil 3d version you are using so i have already opened this sample drawing and also i have created a civil 3d point on this drawing to uh, visualize the things i am explaining here so if you go to the civil 3d interface on your left top you will see a big c here in some versions you will see a, a big a here or depending on the version you will see different kind of icons here but we call this application menu so if you click this application menu you will get so many things in the application menu like open a new draw new template open a new drawing when open an existing drawing save drawing save as drawings export publish print and so many things and also if you have anything to search related to a command or something you can use this area to uh, search that thing so for example if i more learn about the move command you will get many things related to that one from here apart from that you will see a list of recent drawings in this area so this is what you do with the application menu after that you have this area which relates to quick access toolbar where we have some icons uh, which is used to quickly access certain things like undo redo plot and publish uh, in mobile options and save open drawing open new drawing likewise so that is about quick access toolbar again after that one you have this workspace selection area currently my workspace is civil 3d so when you have when you are in civil 3d workspace you will see most of these icons home tab insert tab and this area so if you change this workspace to like drafting and annotation it will be completely changed to a different interface so if you are familiar with autocad this is the autocad drafting environment so that is how to use various workspaces in civil 3d uh, apart from these two you have 3d modeling and planning analysis so since we are doing work with civil 3d workspace i am moving on to the civil 3d workspace so that is civil 3d workspace then we will understand the ribbon this whole area we call it the ribbon so in the ribbon we have so many data which we will be using uh, while 
doing various tasks in civil trade. In civil trade, we have in the ribbon we have so many tabs: home tab, insert tab, annotate tab, modify tab, likewise. So on each of these tabs, we have something called panels. So we call this panel palette panel. Then we call this part create ground data panel. This is create design panel. This is profile and section views panel. Likewise, in various tabs, we have different types of panels. Right? So on each panel, you have different options like with this drop down menus. This is for creating points. Then this is for creating surfaces and feature lines, alignments likewise. You can do so many things using the items in this design panels in the uh, home tab. So in Civil 3D latest version, you will see Project Explorer and Grading op Optimization two sections here. But if you are using older versions like 2020-21, you might need not see these options. After this one directly, you will see this Create Ground Data panel. Then you have this tool space area. Here we have the tool space. This is called the tool space area. So this tool space area, you will have four tabs, prospector, settings, survey, toolbox. So these various sections, tool space, survey, the settings and prospector, do you uh, will be used for various tasks while using civil tree. So after that, you have at the bottom model and layout tabs. Model tab will be the one we are working with and the layout tabs will be used when you are plotting the drawings. And then after that, we have this uh, status tab area where you have the uh, drawing uh, snap settings and auto or uh, polar tracking things that is more or less similar to the AutoCAD settings we are uh, seeing in AutoCAD interface. Then you have this drawing scale area where we can use the, we can change the drawing scale while we are working. And in this right side, you have the transparent commands. We are, you will be using them while using with other commands in Civil 3D. Then you have this our drawing area where we work with and where we see everything what we are doing while we are using the Civil 3D commands and everything. Then we have the most important thing in Civil 3D, like in AutoCAD, the command area where we type our commands and inputs. Uh, to do most of the things in civil 3D. Then we have at the top, we have this information area where you can access so many uh, data like uh, search area and we have you can have the your sign in Autodesk account details and some other shopping details and additional things where you can uh, get more things about, get to know more things about civil 3D. And another one more thing in Civil 3D is the contextual tab, which is an additional part in ribbon. So this is the ribbon and these are the tabs we already know. But if you click on a Civil 3D object like here, this is a Civil 3D point or Kogo point. So it will pop up a new tab on the right side. It will pop up a new tab on the right side. We call it contextual ribbon tab. So once you select a civil 3D object, it will always pop up this kind of uh, contextual ribbon tab. When you press escape, it will be disappeared. Once you select it again, it will appear. So that is the contextual ribbon tab, which includes the uh, special commands so special settings that can be used with the selected civil 3D object. So I press escape again. So if you want to get more area in the drawing uh, by minimizing or minimizing the areas of these tabs and ribbons, you can use click this one. So it will automatically shrink these areas. So while if you click in few more times, you will go to various states of that clicks. So once you click once again, it will come to the initial setting so you can use whatever the settings suited in your case so that is about the civil 3d interface 
In this video, we are going to look at how to import points into a civil 3D drawing. Currently, I have not opened any drawing. First, I will open a new template and continue with our import of points. So to do that, I go to here, application menu. Then I go to new. I will select the default civil 3D template metric version. And click open now we have opened a new drawing with the metric version default template so now I am going to import points into this drawing before importing points into this drawing we will see how a point file so this is a point file so you can see it has five columns these five columns has five types of data the first column gives the point number I would say it as P then it gives the nothing value it is a uh, indication of the location of the point then next column gives you the easting value again indication of a location of the point then you get the Z value or the Z value indication of a elevation of the point Z then we have SHOE column denotes the description so we have point number nothing easting description elevation and finally description so we call this p n e z d we call this p n e z d type of file so the name is topo survey point dot csv this is a csv file csv means comma separated values so i will delete these things and i will close this one without saving before importing point you have to make sure this csv file is uh, closed so i will close this one without saving now i am in my civil 3d drawing again so now i am going to import the points so i go to home tab here we have points i click here go to point creation tools then I have the point import button here import points I click here then I will get a window like this from there I will go to this plus sign to import points add files actually then I have to move on to the location where my uh, topo survey point file is so if you follow the exercise files link you will get this uh, topo survey points sometimes we will get points as text files currently this is selected as csv so if you have a text file as point file you have to select this uh, text type here since we don't have any text type of point file so i am using csv then i select this one and go to open so now in the next stage we have to select the file format so i showed you earlier our file format is p n e z d and it is a comma delimited file so from this list you have to find the correct uh, point point file format so if it is here at the bottom p n e z d comma delimited so it the preview of the points will be given here it will not preview all the points but it will preview some of the points from that you can verify this is in the correct order then after that you have to add these points to a point group so i'll click here and i have to click here to give a name so i say survey points survey points and i click ok so once you click ok it will show you that you have a point group called survey points so that means if you import these points they will be imported into a point group called survey points so i'll click ok and after some time you will see the points are imported into the drawing so i'll close this toolbar i'll double click my mouse wheel it is similar to zoom extent so it will show you the imported points it will zoom to the imported points now you can see it automatically zoomed to the imported points 
So currently you can see this uh, view is pretty much congested with the labels. So I'll change the style something like 1 is to 100 so that you can view this very easily and clearly. So you can see now you have the point, then you have the elevation and then you have the description. So we call this thing point label and this cross type of mark we call it as point style so if you want to change the style or label style you can use this point groups here and you can expand and you can go to survey points where you created right click and go to properties then you can apply separate separate styles like description only if you apply that one it will only give you the description of the point elevation only apply it will only show the elevation of the point so if you want to change the point style you can change it from here we will apply benchmark and see what happens you will see this point style changes so i am going to use basic at the moment and click ok so this is how to import points into this drawing so i will again change the properties to point number elevation and description for easy weaving so this is how you import points into civil 3d so then we will save our drawing with a name such as points imported like that uh, so that uh, we continue our work from here onwards so from here you can go to there and go to the location and save the drawing so i have created the folder and i will save this as points imported and click save so this is how you import points and save the drawing. In the next session, we will see how to create point groups. In this session, we are going to see how to create point groups. Sometimes these point groups uh, are useful when we are doing further work with civil 3D points. So currently in my drawing, I have special type of drawings representing the center line points and representing the tar edge point, this TE points. Actually, this is a survey of a road. So we have in a road, we have the center line points and we have the TE, that means the edge of the road points. So here we are going to create a point group, create two point groups actually to represent the center line and the uh, tie so to do that i go in prospector go to point groups click here new right click and go to new and my point group name would be cl for the center line points so i go to include tab include tab with raw description matching i will say cl asterisk mark so that represent anything comes with cl and other notation like here cl with other notations we will consider it as a center line point so you can verify the center line points are selected by going to the point list tab so it will show you all the center line points here now we know the center line points are included in this point group so i click ok and you will see a new point group comes into the uh point groups area so if you want to select all the center line points you can select this row or this point group right click then go to select then you will see all the center line points at once so similarly you can create a new point group for tie H as well I right click new and this is TE for tie H and go to include this time row descriptions matching te apostrophe asterisk mark so 
you will see all the te points will be populated into this point list and i click ok so a new point group which represent the tiles is also coming right so if you right click and select you can see all the tiles now uh, connected so not only the main road but also in the side roads as, as well the tiles are selected so that is how to create point groups uh, and we will add another point group for trees here we can see trh representing the trees so i'll use here go to new and we'll say tree trees include trh or tr asterisk mark and you will see all the three points are listed here i'll click ok so if someone needs to count how many trees in this area in this survey you can go to here right click go to properties and in the summary tab it will show you how many points are there in this group so that means we have 208 points in trees group that means we have 208 trees in this survey so this point group creation can be a handy one if you want to count something inside a set of points now we have completed importing the points and creating point groups so you can uh, save this drawing with a separate name actually save as this drawing with a separate name if you need to or uh, continue to work with this one uh, for further works in this section we are going to see how to create a surface so we have imported points so from these points we can create a surface surface mean the means the ground model in the area so from the points we are deriving the ground model so to do that i am going to prospect uh, to surface right click and go to create surface and in the create surface window i can give the name here as eg this represent my existing ground so i'll press ok now then i go back to there expand this section and expand this eg and go to definition expand it now i am going to add point groups which i have imported here to the surface to create the surface so i'll right click here then go to add and i will add survey points which is the point where i ex imported so i select survey points click ok so it will automatically create the surface for us so it will give some uh, warnings as well some of the points are duplicated so if civil 3d is going to ignore these points so i'll close this one and now my surface is created so you can see the surface is in a way that with a green color boundary and contours so if you select the surface it will give you a contextual ribbon tab here giving that surface is selected so if i if you press escape it will be gone right so if you want to change the surface style you can go to here so you can either go to here and go to surface properties or otherwise you can right click and go to surface properties or otherwise you can go to here the eg and right click and go to surface properties so either way you can go there and on your information tab you can set various styles and see how the surface looks like so now i am setting border only so you can see now it's border only and if i set contours and triangles it will give you as contours and triangles so if you apply you will see these things so if you go to cut and fill banding and if you click apply it will give you something like this so if you go to elevation banding if it will give you like this something 
so i will go to display border only the border only section and i click ok to accept the style so my surface is now visible with a border only so i'll click this surface now then i right click and go to object weaver from here and while placing my mouse cursor inside this boundary i will drag the left mouse button drag the left mouse button then you will see some kind of a 3d shape of the surface so now if you closely look at the points you know that you have points only in this area right only in this area but your surface is in this area also so that means there is something wrong in our uh, surface so to resolve this issue we will add a boundary to our surface so in the next section we will see how to add a boundary to our surface so that we get a more accurate surface so to go exit from this view i will press escape now i am in this screen so you can save this drawing with a separate name if you like in this section we are going to look at how to add a boundary to the surface to make the surface more accurate to do that i will first turn off the surface style and make set the style to no display to do that i go to here on the prospector to eg surface right click surface properties then i set the style to no display and click ok now my surface display will be gone but but the surface will be there so what i now do is i am creating a boundary around these points and add that boundary as a boundary to the surface we created so to do that first i will create a boundary around this surface so i will launch my polyline command pl and press enter so in the meantime i will turn off my object snaps from here so that it will not snap every any time anywhere when i am creating the boundary so now i am on the polyline command so i will create a boundary around this surface that means i am creating a polyline close to the points but outside the points close to the points but outside the points so if you want if you turn off this polar tracking also so now i am going around this corner so make sure all the points are outside inside the boundary so if you accidentally click inside you can press ctrl z to undo so you will get it back to the original state so you can undo as much as time you want so i am going to go fast so after you come to somewhere here now you have to connect these two to do that you just click close here or press c so i click close here now it will become a polygon right polygon it is a closed polyline or it's a polygon so one thing we need to do at this stage we have to put this into a separate layer so i will create a new layer called surface surface boundary to do that i'll type la in my command line and press enter to access the layer manager then i will put my cursor on zero layer then press enter i will get a copy of the zero layer now so i will say my layer name is surface boundary then i go to here the color section and change the color to brown here sorry yellow here and press ok and i'll close this palette and i'll click this surface boundary 
and on the home tab inside these layers i will set my layer as surface boundary here surface boundary now it will become into yellow color so now i am going to add this boundary to my surface before that i will turn on my surface border again so to do that i click this eg right click surface properties then i go to border only and click ok now we can see my surface x current surface boundary is outside my points here so now i am going to add this boundary into this surface so to do that i will expand this definition section and go to boundaries right click and add and it is asking what is your boundary name i will say uh surface boundary and keeping this everything default i'll click ok otherwise you can change this if you like you can change the mid ordinate distance lower value for the mid ordinate distance will give you more accurate surface and i'll click ok now and it is asking in the command line to select the object which represent the boundary so my new boundary could should be this one so i'll click ok i'll select this one uh, let us see what is happening to this boundary when i select this one so i'm clicking here to select this one so you can see in my boundary shrink into the new boundary so if the existing boundary is inside my drawn boundary it will not change but if the boundary is outside the boundary which i have drawn so it will shrink into the uh, new boundary so now we have a more accurate surface so if you select this surface and go to object weaver now you will see more accurate surface so again you will see there's kind of a small section in the middle like looking like a road because this is a survey of a road so you can see in the middle there is a kind of a road here so you can make it more accurate by adding break lines to the surface that is uh, there is something called break lines and if you add break lines you can get more accurate surfaces so in the next section we will see how to add break lines and make the surface more accurate so before that i will uh, hide this boundary uh, since we don't want this at the moment you can't delete delete this polyline so it if you delete the polyline it will uh, remove the added boundary because your added boundary or the new boundary is related to this polyline so you can't re remove or delete this boundary instead you can freeze this boundary so to freeze this boundary i will go to here surface boundary i'll select the object and go to surface boundary and i click this one to freeze the layer so now it will be hide it but the boundary will be still there if you want the boundary back you can go here and click here to view the boundary again so if you don't want it you can freeze it like earlier in the next section we will see how to add the add the add break lines to the surface in this section you are going to see how to add break lines to the surface so break lines is an item that improves the accuracy of a surface so if you need to have a more better idea about break lines i have included a break video that gives a better understanding about break lines so you can watch the that video in the description found in the description so to add break lines first we need to get a break line get the break lines into this drawing so if you have proper survey data you can draw the 
break lines on your surface like you have the center line points here so you can draw a line connecting the center line points and the tar edge points here te points and also on the other side as well but i have already drawn these lines for you so i'll go to open a new drawing here so in your exercise files folder you will have something called tar edge and center lines so you have to select this tar edge and center lines and click open so it will you can close this one it will give you the tar edge and center lines of the survey area so this is the center line this is the right tar edge this is the left tar edge so i will select all these lines at once right click go to clipboard then copy with base point and for the base point on the command line i'll type 0 comma 0 comma 0 and press enter then i am going to the surface boundary added for my original drawing then i'll right click on it and go to clipboard and go to paste here and for the insertion point i'll type 0 comma 0 comma 0 so you will see those lines now added into the surface if you closely watch you can see mostly they are going along the center line and tide points so they are currently poly lines if you put the cursor on these lines it will show you it is a poly line right so now we are going to add the uh, break lines or add these tie lines center lines to our surface as break lines first i will select these lines so to do that i will select all three lines at once and it will give you uh, it will select all these lines for you so if you have so many parts of the lines you have to select all of them at once then you go to surface expand the surfaces expand eg expand the definition and go to break lines right click then go to add and your name would be surface break lines and you have to select proximity type break lines because we had 2d polylines so we had polylines if you have 3d polylines you can add standard break lines if you have 2d polylines like here you should add uh, proximity break lines in this case so we will add proximity break lines and then click ok so it will add all the uh, break lines to the surface it will uh, ignore one point without adding so we are not going to bother much about that so i close this one now you can see my break lines are added into this layer surface so if you need you can see what are the lines here it is edge of bitumen line center line and then edge of bitumen line on the right side so if you want you can put all these layers into a new layer called break lines otherwise you can keep them as it is and also you can uh, freeze these layers after adding the break lines so now i am going to click the surface and go to object viewer from here or either right clicking from here so if you go to the surface now you now you will see more clear road surface in the middle earlier it was not that clear before adding the break lines but now you can see much more clear surface in the middle of this so much more clear road in the center of this surface that is because we added uh, break lines so that is how break lines is useful when you are modeling a surface so now i'll close this one by pressing escape now we have completed adding break lines to the surface in this section we are going to see how to set an external reference to our civil 3d drawing so external references are used to get more information like background information 
uh, for our drawing from external sources. So in this case, we are using a survey data as our external reference because we need to get more understanding about this survey, this surface area with an uh, external reference. What are the things available in this area and what are the constraints uh, we will be having while we designing a road. So before that, I will do something to this background area that is I will turn off the display of the points so that I get a more clear screen. So to do that, I am going to the prospector tab, then go to point groups and I go to uh, all points, all points. So I need to change the display off for all points. So I right click here and I go to properties from here. So I will move on to the overrides tab and I will set my style and point label style both to none. So it will override all the existing styles on my drawing and set my display to none and point label styles to none. That means it will override anything set in here. So now I click OK to apply. So you can see nothing happened because my point group is at a lower level. So to get things done properly, you need to make to the top of this level. So I'll click here, go into properties, right click and go to properties. And I move this point group up. So it will be up and it will govern all the settings for the point, all the points. So all the display settings and label settings will be governed by this point group. So I click OK. Now you will see, you don't see any points or point labels in the drawing. So this is how you turn off the point display. Right. So uh, then I am going to add the external reference to our drawing. So to do that, I am going to the external reference command or otherwise xref command you have to type xr in your keyboard and press enter then it will give you the external reference palette i will move it here then you go to here and go to attach drawing and in your exercise folder you will see something called topo survey so you want to go there and click and go click open so it will load a external reference window and you don't have to change anything make sure you don't have a check mark here check mark here and check mark here and also make sure you are drawing units and uh, external reference units are same so if there is a difference this might not come to the exact location so now i want to click ok so my external reference will be added so now you can see in the drawing my external reference is added so you can see you have the center line edge lines and everything will be shown here in addition to that you have the building information and you have some other data uh, like wire fence telephone post manhole like that so many things are given here in the survey so if you click it it will select you it will select everything as a block because it is external reference drawing so if you need to uh, turn off the display of this external reference you can select this one and right click then go to unload unload so it will be uh, removed from your view so if you want to get back that view type xref or xr on your command line then get the external reference palette, then right click here and go to reload, then it will reload the drawing. So if you want to completely remove this xref, you can detach this one, detach this one. That is how to you, how would you work with the external reference. So since you have uh, <coughs> imported the external, 
inserted the external reference so attach the external reference into your drawing now you can remove these uh, edge lines and center lines from the drawing which we added as break lines like earlier you cannot delete them because it is related to the surface so you have to uh, freeze them using the layers so i will click this layer first and i go here and freeze it and this one as well and i freeze it finally the other one on the right side i will freeze that too right all right so that is how you have the external reference into this drawing now my drawing is more clear and without points but the points are still there but i have turned off the display it is a more clear drawing now we have imported the uh, we have inserted the external reference now in the next section we will see how to create alignment so that we follow the existing center line as much as possible but with the uh, new smooth center line because we have some uh, discontinuity like this is not uh, like it is not a smooth center line where we have now so we will smooth the center line and we will create a new center line for this road in the next section in this section we are going to create an alignment for this uh, survey area with the, including the surface we have so to create an alignment uh, we need to go to home tab alignment alignment creation tools so it is giving the alignment creation window so to my name alignment name i will type design center line and if you like you can give you a description as well our type would be center line so my starting station is zero and i will use proposed as my alignment style and alignment label style as uh, all labels later we can change these things if you like so i click ok here so it will give you a toolbar like this so if you create the alignment and if you get this layout toolbar grayed out at the first time you need to close the drawing and open it again otherwise you cannot do anything from the uh, anything with the alignment you have to create that alignment from the beginning again that is uh, only when you are starting for the first time but if you are already created an alignment i will tell you how to do with that one later so now i am going to create my alignment so in this case i will be using very few tools to create the alignment because we have so many tools here but i will later tell you uh, i will give you more resources to find out more about alignments so i will click this option tangent tangent no curves first so make sure your object snaps are turned off not none of the object snaps are turned on here make sure that so i'll start somewhere from the starting area so first i will create the straight parts first for so this is my center line so i will try to make my part as straight as possible so in this in this area you can see small curve here so i will stop my straight line somewhere here and then i right click so it will you can see uh, my chain edges or the stations start to pop up so this is kind of small here so i will set my scale into one is to thousand so that i can see everything very clearly now i have created the one created one straight section here then i have another straight section here somewhere in the middle so i will draw that part 
from this so I will come to here and I will draw that straight part as well then I right click now my changes for the station labeling won't be continued up to this point because we have a gap in this area so if you accidentally close this toolbar while you are drawing these things so you can get it back by selecting the alignment selecting the alignment and then right click go to edit alignment geometry from here or otherwise you can go to a uh, geometry editor on the align uh, ribbon right so i'll go with edit alignment geometry then it will be back so you, you don't need to create a new alignment in this case you can get it back uh, with the alignment geometry ed editor so after you create this some create some part of the alignment if you see these some of these are grayed out then what you have to do is you have to close the drawing and reopen it again and click the alignment and go to geometry editor like earlier so then you will be getting a, a selectable toolbar here if it is not grayed out right right so that is how to uh, get rid if the toolbar is grayed out once you started creating the alignment so now i am going to add a curve here so i will go to these curve options then i will use this free curve fillet two entities through point so i click here so it is asking on the command line first select the first entity so my alignment is running from here to here so i my first entity would be this green line i select this one and my next entity would be this green line i select that one then it is asking a location for the curve to go so you can check with, with from where you can set the curve so it will tell you so i put my cursor somewhere here so right so i have created the curve from here then what i do is i have another curve here then i have some kind of a straight section here as well so i have another straight section from here maybe somewhere here i will start my straight section and i will go somewhere here and stop and right click then i have my curve so once you have selected one entity type it will be preloaded up to up here so you don't go, want to go from here if you are going to use the same one you can click here straight away so it will load the last command so i will use select first entity and select the next entity and i will add the curve like this and right click now you can see your alignment changes so stationing me also continues so likewise you can uh, continue your uh, alignment so seems like we have a larger radius curve here but in the midpoint i can see there's a straight section so i'll have this straight here and right click and i will have a curve here in the middle right so again we have another one here and i will come to the end here and right click and i will add the curve again from here to here so now this curve not seems to be correct because it is going out somewhat so i will use a new option here i will use uh, actually two curves at this case so i will use this command here floating sorry uh, from here i will go from here floating curve from entity end through point this option 
and I'm start it is asking to select my entity I select this entity so it will start my curve from this end and I will create a curve and stop that curve somewhere here so that it follows my center line and right click then I am going to add a brand new curve here so I'll try to make it this way we will see whether it works free curve fillet if it is not working we will see another option so I'll click here and click here and it supports our option so I will click here to finish the uh, alignment now my alignment is completely finished sometimes uh, when you have two curves in close interval and you are trying to create free curve fillet from this one from this curve to this straight section sometimes it might not work in older versions but uh, you can use other methods in that case so this is basically how to create the alignment so when you are creating the alignment you need to check so many factors like uh, there may be constraints like you might not you cannot go some areas on the road so you can see this is a little bit away from the center line so sometimes there may be a constraint you can't go this far from the center line so in that case you have to edit this alignment so you have to pay attention should attention to those details when you are creating the alignment uh, in other words when you're creating the alignment you need to follow alignment creation guidelines if you are a highway engineer or you are using highway engineering standards or guidelines you have to use those guidelines to create the alignment to satisfy the design speech and other super elevation criteria but this is only for to give you a basic understanding how to create an alignment from civil 3d in the description area i will add a source so that you can get better understanding about how to create an alignment with uh, most of these options so you can get more idea from that uh, video in this section we are going to look at how to modify the alignment uh, before that we will see how to uh, edit alignment uh, actually change the alignment style and change the alignment label style so that you get get a better weaving or the desired weaving you need so i am going to select my alignment from here and go to alignment properties from here or either you can right click from here and you can go to alignment properties or in on the other hand you can go to alignment section in prospector then center line alignments and go to design center line and right click go to properties you will go to alignment properties so there are three ways you can access alignment properties so to the alignment to change the alignment style you can go to information tab proposed alignment style is the one we have actually so if you want to look at other options you can select basic and apply you will see this is white colored one and if it is existing it is like this and i will go prefer to go with offset style so that we get a better weaving of the alignment style so i'll press cape at the moment you can see for the curves you get blue color and straight sections you get uh, red color so in this is kind of a easy way to view the alignment so i will use this as my uh, alignment style so this is the alignment label so you can see they are labeled at 20 meter intervals here 0 20 40 like that so we have a tick mark here at every 10 meter interval 0 10 20 30 likewise then if you move forward it will tell you the design speed of the alignment we are using if you are using the alignment uh, speeds design speeds on this road and the starting station it has labeled then if you go move forward further you can see this is the starting point of the curve it will give you the chain edge or the starting station of the curve and midpoint of the curve and again the end point of the curve likewise for every curve it will give you these details 
So to change the alignment label styles, you have to select the alignment. Then you have to right click and go to edit alignment labels. So it will give you the edit alignment labels window. So to set alignment labels, actually we are what we are doing is we are going to import label sets. That means not one label style. We will have separate label sets. So styles, uh, they are compiled into a style called label sets. So we will click this import label set and I will use major and minor, major, minor and geometry points label style. Now in, so once I click OK, you will see this area will change. So you can see now this area changed. I will select or oh, I will click OK. So now you can see my previous labels are now decreased to somewhat because we don't get these design speeds and so that in this alignment style. So uh, then if you need to set a design speed to your alignment, you have to select the alignment, go to alignment properties and go to the design criteria tab here you can set the design speed of your alignment if you want to so if you don't want that one you can delete it from here if you want to add more you can do it from here so then there are some things called uh, check tangency so you can if you go with if you do the alignment with your with proper alignment designing you will not get this kind of uh, tangential issues so if you need to know about them please check some uh, videos on civil 3d uh, related videos on youtube or other internet resources you will see what is given by these things so if you want to know more about at this stage you can click help here so it will give you the explanation for all these things so every time if you go with civil 3d you can click help on every window so that you get uh, related help to the window you are uh, selected or the window you are working on right so i'm going to remove this design speed and click ok so that we, that there won't be any design speeds associated with my alignment i press escape here now now i am going to see now we are going to see how to uh, modify this alignment so i am clicking my alignment then let us say we need to delete this curve so to do that select the alignment edit alignment geometry or geometry editor from here so you can delete anything from here delete sub entity button so you can delete this curve from here if you need to delete this line as well you can delete that so i'll right click so once i right click my label will discontinue from this point point onwards because you don't have a connection here so if you want to move this one further down here you can do that and if you want anything done here you can do that as well then again you can have a curve so let us say i am moving this towards right side and I am going to add a curve here like we did earlier. Right. So this is my curve now. I have added so many curves here. So now we are going to change the radius of this curve because we don't know what is the radius this, of this curve. We are, we are going to see what is the radius and we are going to see how to change it. So I'll click this here pick sub entity so it will load a new window like a parameter window here so once you click any entity like a curve here it will give you the parameters of that curve so if you select a straight it will give the parameters of the straight in this case i am going to select this one and i am going to select edit this radius currently i cannot edit this radius so i will make this parameter constraint false so that I can edit the radius. Now, I'll, now this radius is 554.6 point 
so I'll make it 550 so that we get a better we uh, better uh, radius number then I right click to accept that one so in the same way if you want to edit this one I'll go to here and I will click this curve and again this is 230.117 I'll click false and I will make it 230 so when you are making the changes don't make drastical changes like uh, this if this is 231 you cannot make it 400 so because if you make it 400 this might go outside or we, we, this might have a major deviation so let us see this 400 so you can see it's a major deviation from the existing one so you have to make sure that you are doing minor modification then i right click so i will close this for the moment but if you want to do the edit all at once you can click here this uh, alignment grid view button so it will show you all these parameters at once so it, if you select any curve here it will highlight on the window right so here and here those curves will be highlighted so even if you select another curve it will be highlighted so this first curve here i am selecting now it is highlighting on the curve so if you need to change the radius of all these curves you can do it here now it is 100 and 230 here this is the radius column so now this one you have to unlock here then we might make it 270 and then here this is 563.95 i mean make it 65 and for this one i'll make it uh, 190 so likewise you can change the radius so if you want to make this radius locked so you can lock them so that no one can edit it later straight away so i'll close this one now our alignment is done our radiuses are done so in addition to that there are some other options here you can uh, search and see what are these what is done by each of these options uh, and finally if you want to undo or redo anything related to the alignment creation you can use these two buttons so it will only undo or redo whatever the things you did in your alignment so that is about modification on your alignment setup in this section we are going to create the surface profile and profile view so uh, what do you mean by surface profile surface profile means we have a surface we have a alignment so if you need to add the surface details to this alignment then what we do is we are creating a surface profile currently the surface and the uh, alignment are not connected with each other so by creating the surface profile what we do is we are asking the alignment to get the elevations from the surface right so to do that i'll select my alignment so on my alignment contextual ribbon tab i have this surface profile option i'll click here so it will give you a window create profile from surface so i'll select my center line if you have so many alignments in this drawing you will have to select the correct alignment from this drop down or you can select this pick or select the from the drawing button to select the alignment correct alignment from the drawing so i'll click here to get the surface and i will click this add button so if you have so many surfaces you have to select the correct surface otherwise you can use this pick from drawing button so i have select this surface now i click add here so it will add the surface into the alignment and it will show up in this area so i'll click add here so my surface is added to the 
alignment so after that what we do is we will draw a profile view uh, so that we can get a view of the elevations of the surface along the alignment so i'll click draw in profile view so it will give this give us some uh, wizard to go with so i'm not going to change anything on this wizard i will go and finally create profile view so i'll click ok here so it will show me the uh, profile view so it shows me like this is the starting point and this is the elevation of that starting point and it is uh, when you come to the end of the alignment it will gradually uh, comes down so it starts somewhere around elevation 32 close to 32 and it will end up with like uh, 6 close to 17 so it will tell you how the al alignment elevation varies along the alignment it is going to give you a line so we call this the profile this is the profile and this gray color area or this block what you select is called the profile views here you can see it is the profile view so if i press escape and select this red line it is the profile or the surface profile or the elevations of the surface just underneath the alignment so i click escape at the moment if you need to change the style of this profile view you have to select the profile view then right click and go to profile view properties otherwise you can go to profile view properties from here as well i'll click here right click and go to profile view properties so in the information tab you can change the profile view style to various profile views so that you get a various profile view so you can check which one suits for you and you can edit uh, or you can keep whatever the thing you like so i am working on several options and i think this is better and i click ok so this is my profile view now it is more clear than earlier so it gives you the elevations and you gives it you see the chain edges and on here you have the uh, elevation of the existing and the proposed but currently we don't have a proposed profile so the both elevations are same that means at alignment uh, 40 station 40 it is 13.68 something and it is same as 13.30.679 same thing but one decimal place difference so we will be adjusting this more in coming sections but this is at the moment you have to understand this is how to create the profile view in this section we are going to see how to edit this profile view so that we, uh, we get a clear view of the profile view and more data uh, of this profile view so to do that i will select my profile view and i will right click and go to edit profile view style from here then i will move on to the grid tab on the profile view edit profile view and i will select clip vertical grid so in this area it will show you a preview what is happening so once i clip vertical grid you will see this area uh, removes and clip to the highest profile so if you have two profiles it will go up to the highest profile of the two the vertical grids then again you can like if you can if you want you can use this one to omit grid padding so i'm not going to do that and same way horizontal grid we are going to clip and i am going to click ok now so now you get a 
better viewing of your profile view so then again we will do another modification that is currently my labels are shown profile view labels sorry this profile view labels actually we call this profile view bands i will show you later so they are at 40 meter interval so i am going to make it 20 meter interval uh, since my alignment labels are shown in 20 meter interval so i click the profile view right click then go to profile view properties then i will move on to the bands tab and from there i can set this major increment which relates to the labels here 20 meter and the grids here these major grids are shown in 40 meter interval minor grids are shown in 20 meter interval so i will click this option match major me minor option and i change this to 20 meter and change this to 10 meter until you uncheck this option you can't change this area so i'll click ok now now you will see my labels are at 20 meter interval uh, minor grids are actually not shown here so now the we, we have uh, data in 20 meter interval so now i am going to add more labels here add more bands here as the label so i'll click the profile view go to profile view properties from here this time and i will add a new band to the bottom so that i will get more details so the band type is profile data there are so many bands type here i am only working with this at this stage so if you, when you are getting more experience with civil 3d you can work with other things as well and also import bands that option as well so i am going to use cut data so if you like you can import cut and fill one here so it will give you the same thing stations and cut and fill uh, but i i am not going to do that this stage so i'll go to this one eg fg elevation and stations so that i get the earlier one like here then i will separately add this cut data and i click here to add the data here so you have to just click ok you don't need to change anything and it is just saying that you have a gap of 12.5 meter that means from this band it will have a 12.5 millimeter gap with the other band so if you want to change that one you can uh, use uh, separate gap here so now, since my band set changed now my interval also has been changed to 100 meters i will change it to 20 meter like earlier and 10 meter for here so again i am checking this start and end labels uh, so that we get we see the start label and end label end station because uh, especially zero is okay but the end station may be not a rounded number so we have to change that station as well we have to show that station as, as well so i click ok now you will see a new band will come down so currently we don't have any data in this band so to show you cut fill data uh, it there should be two profiles one and two profiles to compare for a cut or fill so we will add those things later but for the moment we have added this uh, band and this is how to add a band and you can see the last data is also shown here because because of this style my labels gone somewhere out here but uh, if you change the label style sometimes these things might work properly but as a beginner's guide we are not going to learn much more about that things in this stage so for the moment we are done 
and this is how to modify the profile view so in the next section we will see how to create a new proposed profile on this profile view in this section we are going to see how to create a profile or proposed profile on top of the profile view we created earlier so uh, the proposed profile means currently we have the existing profile of the road underneath the alignment so this is the existing one so what we are going to do is we are going to create a new alignment new vertical alignment or we call it new profile to uh, add to this road so to do that i am going to select this profile view and on the profile view you have profile creation tools i'll click here and it is asking with the what is the profile view name you are going to use so i will give you proposed profile as my name and if you need you can set a description and you have the label set and everything here we will see how to modify them later so i'll click okay now i am going to have a toolbar like this so like earlier so if you get a grayed out toolbar at the first place before you are creating anything on this profile view you have to close the drawing and reopen it uh, in that case once you are close the drawing and reopen it you cannot use the same name as the profile view sometimes you may have to use some other name so if you use the same name if you it will give you another uh, bracket here like prof first profile one as your profile right so it uh, because the earlier profile is uh, hidden inside the drawing that's why so i am going to create the profile we profile now so we have we can do the profile very easily not like alignment so i will select this option and go to draw tangents so i'll start at the end sorry at the start so it's better to start from the zero so it's better to snap to the end so i will click this object snap and i'll make sure my endpoint step is turned on so you should have a check mark here so uh, if you don't have you have to click here and make that checked and now i am going to come to the end and i am going to start the profile view now i will close here so turn off the object snaps now i am going to create a profile on top of this area so i am going down here a little bit you will understand why i go down here later i will going somewhere up here and i come like here somewhere here so this is only for the explanation so in your doing work with real world you may have to do these things more carefully by looking at the site and everything and completing this just only for demonstration right so i will click here and when i come to the end i have to catch the end as well so i click here to turn on the object snaps and i click here and press enter now you can see my alignment is profile is created you have the labels here so this is your gradient minus 2.5 2.01 gradient here 1.09 gradient this is the labels at grade breaks that means your elevation at this point is 29.202 and the chain age or the station at this point is 2123.5 likewise you get all those details so if you want to add curves to this profile you can use use this option this curve option 
and go to more free vertical curves free vertical parabola pvi based so it is asking what is the pvi point so i'll click here these are called the pvi point these changing points so i select my first pvi point and it is asking what is your curve length so you have to select some type of curve length for this curve so these curve lengths and gradients are all uh, related with highway engineering some so if you are using these things to create or design a road you have to follow these guidelines as well since this is a starter video section or a beginner section i am not going to do any details on that so i am going to use 40 as my curve length so you will see it will add the 40 meter curve and change these two gradients with the curve in the middle so without pressing escape you can go go to the other curve and we i made another curve 50 meter and you can select here and go to other curve i like select this at 60 meter so likewise you can add more curves i will add 100 meter curve here and so if you have 100 meter curve it, that curve will end somewhere here so if you are going to add another curve to this one that curve length should not uh, overlap with this curve length if the curve lengths are overlapping with each other it will not let you add a curve to this station so let me show you that so i am clicking this station so it is asking for the curve length i will give a higher curve length here like 500 so you will see it can't be added so it says no solution available because the 500 curve length will interfere with the curve here so i will only add uh, 50 meter curve here so we will add a 100 meter curve here and once you have done all these things we will right click and you will see all the curves are added now you can see the curve details like curve length here low point station high point station so many details are here so uh, that is how you add curves so you can now see why i add this pvi point somewhere here below the ground because when you are adding the curve length it is coming somewhere up so once we edit the curves we will edit the profile uh, we will see how to get this more up right that is how to create a new profile in civil 3d so in the next section we will see how to edit this profile or modify this profile so that we get better view and better display of data on the profile in this section we are going to understand how to modify the profile we created earlier so uh, before modifying the profile we will see how to modify the profile labels and modify the profile style so it is same as earlier we have to select the profile so we have to select the correct profile we have two profiles now eg profile and uh, FG profile or the proposed profile so make sure you have select the proposed profile then if you need to change the profile style right click once you select the profile right click go to profile properties and change various styles and see what suits you right various styles and see what is suits for you so i am going to use this design profile option yes and i click ok so now i am going to change the label style so i'll click here right click while selecting the profile go to edit labels so usually instead of edit ed editing each of the labels what we do is import a label set i click here so you can only set one label set here uh, that is come that is what comes with default civil 3d so i click ok so we don't have to change this thing so if you need you if you think you need to 
remove these all these labels you can right click and you can set this no labels type click here and apply you will see no labels on the civil 3d profile so i am going to add that labels again click ok so that is how to change the profile style and profile label sets then we will see how to modify this profile we created so once you click this profile you will see several grips on this profile so the, from these grips you can modify the profile easily so if you want to retain this low opacities and modify this one you can use this option so this left side slope will be remained and right side slope will be changed so in the same way you can do the other way around as well so if you want to change this elevation of this pvi point higher or lower you can use this option right so every time you can use this option for the other curves as well so if you want to change the curve length of this one you can what you can do is right right click and go to edit profile geometry so i forgot to tell you earlier once you are creating the profile also like in alignment if you accidentally close this toolbar you can get it back by right click and go to edit profile geometry otherwise you can use this option as well geometry editor so i am going to modify this profile so like in earlier you have to select a location to edit so currently i don't see this is highlighted to to get anything uh, edit based data on all entities so i am going to this option select pvi option and i select this curve to edit so you can see it is 123.5 so if you like you can change it to 125 around that number and this elevation if you like you can change it to 29.2 around that number and curve length you can see now it is under the ground if you want you can take it up like i am putting here 100 meters so it will come up right so likewise you can edit and here also i can change this curve so that it follows the existing ground slope like here now this is at a higher elevation now what i will do is i click here and come to this pvi point because it is asking to select the pvi so i come to this pvi point now i change the curve length to a higher value so that my profile comes down and my chain edges pvi station i will go to a rounded station and make this also 31.45 around that number so like earlier you can go to here and change everything at once if you like so you have the curve lengths you can change the muscle you can change these pvi locations you cannot change the start and end don't do that because start should be zero and should be mostly end of the alignment so you don't need to change that one apart from that you can change the other things i make it 510 this is 780 maybe this is 910 and this is 1150 so likewise you can change and also the 23.71 20.8 likewise you can change 13.83 and 15.26 so you will see so you have the gradients also here if you like to change the gradients you can do that as well so again you will get the k values so if you learn highway engineering geometric design you will know what are these so you can edit the profile based on these parameters once you learn those things as uh engineers or drafting person so now i am going to close this one so i will if you want to delete a curve if you want to delete a curve you have to use this option so once you delete use delete curve option you will 
delete that curve i will delete this curve here because this is almost straight section so i don't want this curve i will delete this curve and it will come to two tangent sections this is 0.6 gradient and this is 0.46 gradient so i will delete this pvi as well so that we get one straight section here so i will use this option to delete the pvi and i will click here it will delete the pvi now we have only one gradient here so if you think you need a curve here so you can add a new pvi from from here so somewhere here let us say we are going to add that pvi so now our new pvi is added you can then again add a curve to this location and i will make it the radius as curve length as 100 so you will get a curve here so if this is too high this is too high you can make it downwards using these grips right so also you can make it downwards further from this grip and you can increase the curve length here so i will do that fast go here I select this one instead of this i will select 150 here and i will go again from here i will change this to 920 and 13.1 the elevation and i am moving to here because i did not rounded this one this is 1240 it actually it is rounded and this is 17.76 we say like this so now we have rounded everything so that is how to modify the profile so as earlier you can use profile related redo undo options from here so i'll close this one and i will finish editing my profile using the profile modification options in the next section we will see how to edit the profile view band so that we are representing all these informations current correctly in these bands in this section we are going to edit the profile view band so that we get a correct display of the data on the profile view bands so currently i have these profile view bands this uh, elevation data, data data elevation band and the cut field data band here so i am going to edit these things so my i have two profiles one is the proposed profile I select this one this is proposed profile then i press escape and select this one this is the eg surface one it is the existing ground profile so i press escape again so uh, then i select the profile view then go to profile view properties from here then uh, what i do is i am going to change this data so i am moving back so first band that means this band we have the elevation and station data this is elevation data this is the station data then we have the cut data inside this band so i am going to here so your profile one means this data profile two means this data so for the profile one I will select my proposed profile data and for the profile 2 I am decreasing the size here so for the profile 2 I will increase here make sure your reading is 0 otherwise you won't see all the data properly so the second one also I am using the proposed profile so in the first tab from the first profile that means this profile one this is the proposed ground profile one this is the proposed ground and profile two this is the existing ground so these two data will be shown 
here and for the cut field data the first profile is profile 1 this is the pro proposed profile and the second profile is ag surface 1 that is the existing surface so what we do here is we are uh, subtracting profile 1 which is the proposed profile and we are subtracting it eg profile and we are getting the difference actually from between the proposed profile and eg surface so if it is a positive difference it won't be a cut if it is the negative difference it will be a cut actually what happens is uh, you get this profile value and minus get this profile value that is what basically happens here so i'll click ok so you will see what happens here now you can see now this is my actually this is not a cut situation because this my proposed ground is at a higher elevation and my existing ground is at a lower elevation so this is not a cut situation so the way we have defined it is wrong so i have to make it the other way but the other things we have uh, done correctly because this is the proposed elevation that means i will come here and show you so this is 13.9 means the proposed profile elevation 13.97 means the existing elevation at that location so if you come to here this is 13.65 is your exist proposed ground station which is underneath the ground and 14.028 uh, which is the existing ground elevation that is at a higher level these, these two are the data shown here and this is the band data so we will modify this data because we should subtract existing ground and uh, we should get the difference first profile should be the ag one the second profile should be the proposed one to get the cut data so currently this shows as this cut data is actually the field data so i am going to change it i click ok click the profile view go to profile view properties so my in this case my profile eg eg surface one is the first one and this is the second one so we will subtract this one from this one to get the cut data now you will see when your ground is when your uh, existing ground is below existing ground is at a higher situation that, that only we are get a cutting situation so at that situation you will get the details right so other details will be fill data uh, filling data it won't come here right so that is how to uh, complete the band in the profile view In this section, we are going to learn how to add a layout to our alignment and our drawing. So before that, we will see what is meant by a layout because we are designing a road with Civil 3D in this whole exercise. So before that, we need to understand what is the layout. So layout means the lay arrangement of the road so currently we only have the center line but in a road we have some other components so you can see here i have a sample image of a road so in the middle you can see the center line then from the middle you can see a yellow color line either side of the center line so these are called lane edges so this width from center line to this lane edge we call it the lane width so both sides we have lane widths most of the cases the lane widths are equal if it is a uh, two lane two way road so two lane two way means in one direction vehicle is going this way and on the other direction vehicle is coming from this way vehicles are going on two directions we call it two lane two way 
road. So now we have two lanes and this is the lane width. Then after that we have another area. Uh, in this area is also completed with asphalt material. The material the road is constructed here is asphalt. So you can see this asphalt material which has extended somewhere beyond the lane edge in both sides. So this area we call it as the shoulder. So in both sides we have shoulders usually shoulder width is less than the lane width then then just after that we may have some other area sometimes we call it soft shoulder or sometimes we call it verge in this case uh, but it depends on the area so if you are uh, working in an urban area we might not have this type of shoulders or uh, verge instead we may have a footwork so in our example we will be looking at a road like this a lane and a shoulder then we have a verge here so this is called lane width this is shoulder width and then we have the verge width of the verge then after that we may have a drain after that in the um, at the edge of the uh, verge maybe a, a drain most cases uh, there may be uh, concrete drains or other type of drains as well so we will move back to civil 3d to create the layout so when we are creating the layout what we do is we are demarcating this lane edge shoulder edge and uh, the verge in this case we are not going to create the verge but instead we will be doing lane edge and shoulder edge in both sides uh, we already have the center line so based on the center line we will uh, define these lane edges and shoulder edges so i will move back to civil 3d now now i am in civil 3d so before doing any uh, offset i have to select my center line alignment because we are creating the layout uh, based on the center line alignment so we are creating the layout using a method called offset alignments so i have selected my center line so then I go to offset alignment on the ribbon. First we will mark our lane edges at both sides. So you will get a window like this. So you have from start to end we will have number of offset means number of lanes like that. And let us say our width of the lane is 3.5 meters both side 3.5 meters. So it will create a lane edge in both sides which is at a distance of 3.5 meter from the center line so the alignment offset offset alignment style this is also a, a alignment so this is the style of this alignment alignment is offsets and we don't add labels in this case now I'll click ok here so now you can see we have two offset alignments from the center line and they are at a width of uh, 3.5 meters so at this at this moment i'll press k and i will select the alignment and turn off these labels because it is kind of disturbing me at this case so i will select the alignment right click and go to alignment labels edit alignment labels and then go to import label set I'll click no labels so I will not see any labels now so this is how we create the lane edges for our road design project so the beauty of offset alignment is they are dynamic to the center line alignment so if you are going to change the center line alignment you will see that our offset alignments is also changing with that uh, while maintaining 3.5 distance from the center line of the uh, road so let us say i am going to using this grip i am going to move this road towards this inside so you can see my offset alignment also moved you can see my offset alignment is moving so i'll undo until the last moment right so that is how to work with offset alignment now we have already created uh, our 
lane edges now i am going to create the shoulder edges so when you are creating the shoulder edges shoulder edge is one meter away we are assuming that shoulder has a width of one meter so it is one meter away from this left shoulder left lane edge and uh, one meter away from the right lane edge so to create the shoulder edge i'll click this one the left offset alignment from that left offset alignment i will create another offset alignment so it is automatically giving some names for the offset alignment so we don't have to and rename them because they are kind of logical names so when we are having when we are creating the shoulder for the left side we don't need to have a shoulder on the right side because it is inside the lane we are going to uh, on the outside of the lane so my right side i don't have any offsets right side so on the left side i will have one offset and the width is one meter and the label style is same so i click ok now you will see one meter offset line so in the same way you can do to the right side i'll do it quickly now my both sides have completed so they will be dynamic to this center line so if i move this line you will see everything moves accordingly because they are dynamic to each other right so again now i am going to turn on my labels right click edit alignment labels i'll turn on my labels major and minor geometry points the one we used earlier and click ok so what i what i am going to do now is i am going to increase the width of this road here so that i am assuming that we have a kind of a bus bay here so to do that what i do is i will select this shoulder line because i am widening the shoulder so i'm selecting this shoulder line and here i have something called add widening so i click this add widening and it is asking on the command line is it a new alignment or uh, part of the same alignment so i am not going to create new alignment so i click no here so it is asking from where you need to create this widening so i am starting this widening from station 150 here so if you have object snaps turn on here object snaps turn on with endpoint snap or maybe the intersection is snap as well so you will kind of get the 150 station easily so i click here then it is so i'll click here so i click here and get that station now it is asking what is your end station so in station i will be selecting as 170 20 meters away from this one this location 170 i click here so it is asking enter the widening offset widening offset means from this point actually not this point this widening is based on this area this offset alignment this is already one meter let us assume that we need two meters for the bus bay or the bus stop so altogether this widening would be three meters so my widening is three meters and i press enter so what happens is now we have a bus bay and it automatically applies some kind of uh, transitioning because the width is going to be changed so you can uh, change the transition if you like otherwise you can keep it as it is so for the moment i am keeping it as it is for the sake of easiness of the project so i click close here and escape now you can see our road is one side of the road is widening for a bus bay so if you like you can add other bus bay on the other side as well so this is our layout for the road now we have lane edge shoulder edge and also we have a bus bay with a widening at the shoulder edge 
Uh, we are not going to add the verge here at this moment, but if you like, you can add the verge. So in the next section, we will starting a new part, which is creating the uh, corridor and using the assemblies. In this section, we are going to create assembly uh, to create a corridor. This is one of the most important parts in civil 3D. So when by creating an assembly, what we do is we are creating a sample of the road uh, so that we can apply throughout this road to get our final corridor or the final 3D model of the uh, road. So by creating the assembly, what we do is we will have a cross section across this one of these locations. So how the road will look like. So we will see how to do that. So to do that, I am going to assembly in my home tab. I am going to assembly and I'll click this create assembly. So in the create assembly window, I will type my name of the assembly as two lane two way road right so if you like you can get a set a description and also we have i am going to have this default parameters here not going to change anything then click ok and it click ok here so now it will give you a straight line with some marker in the middle so we call this the assembly so this is something similar to the center line of your road so based on this center line we will be adding two lanes to the either side of the assembly and two shoulders after the lane then we will add a, a verge as well so to do that you need to go to tool palettes so tool palette is here just after the tool space so you need to click here alternatively you can click ctrl 3 on your keyboard to get the tool palettes so i'll click here so it will come like this i am moving it to here so from here you need to go to lane step because we are going to add a lane here so i'll click here i will see all the tabs so from that i will go to lanes tab from the lanes i am going to get lane super elevation aor here so you will get something like this you can edit the parameters here at the moment i am not going to edit i am just adding it here just click the bottom side of this assembly to add the lane to your uh, assembly so i'll click here now it has been added to my assembly so i'll close this one and i'll press escape now my lane is added so i'll do some modifications here so i'll close this one as well for the moment so i'll click here and go to sub assembly properties or right click and go to sub assembly properties either way now i am going to rename this as my right lane so i'll say lane r then i am going to the parameters tab now it is on the right side so you can remember our lane width was 3.5 meters and default slope i make it as minus 2.5 that means it will have a slope of minus 2.5 percent from the center line so if you are using uh, sometimes uh, in real practice you need to apply super elevation in different cases but we are at as, as a starter uh, section we are not going to uh, think about those things at the moment so then we have pavement layers on the road so the first pavement layer we will make it as minus 0 0.5 sorry uh, 0 0.5 millimeters 0 0.5 meters that means 50 millimeters for the pave to depth also we will make it 50 millimeters and base depth we make it 100 millimeters and the sub base depth make it 300 millimeters and use super elevation we will say none but if you have super elevation values you can set the values from here but we are not going to use that option at this stage 
then you have the slope direction away from ground and potential pivot you have to set it to no actually that is that refers to this flag like icon so it will be removed once you this once you set this to no so if i click apply you will see everything will be changed here now it will be changed once you click ok now you you, it's, you might have seen now width has changed our layer thicknesses has changed so i will do a, a modification for the base depth make it 0.2 actually so you will see this updated now yeah you can see right so for the inside point code it is crown outside point code i'll make it as uh, edge of lane and i click ok and i click ok here now you will see the lane is added so now our right lane is completed now i am going to add the uh, right shoulder so right shoulder will be same as the lane but the only the change is width so what i do is i select on the sub assembly right side which we created and go to copy here on the ribbon then i will attach it to this top circle and it will be attached to the right side of that top circle so i press keep and i go to here sub assembly properties and this time this is shoulder r and go to parameters shoulder width is one meter the other parameters you don't have to change but only one parameter inside point code this time it is edge of lane and this one is edge of payment that's the only thing you have to change you click ok you will see the width changes now then after that we will add the verge or the soft shoulder here to the end so to do that i am going to use a new sub assembly type so i go to here and go to the shoulders and use this shoulder extend all this option and click here and i am coming to here and add this to this corner and i press keep and close this one so now i am going to do some modification here so i select this one and go to sub assembly properties this time this is verge r and the parameters this is right side so verge i will set another one meter width for that one use super elevation we are not going to use super elevation slope away from crown shoulder slope i'll make it minus four percent and it uh, we are telling that you have to adjust the slope you have to adjust the width by holding this slope this means this slope so this slope is i'll say it is 1.5 meters into one that means horizontal one 1.5 meters vertically one meter down likewise so daylight width uh, i'll you don't have to uh care about this width because we are adjusting with while ho holding the slope so super elevate sub base no uh, and sub base slope we will make it same as minus four and we will not have these payment layers on the top in the base verge so we'll make it zero the whole thing will be based on sub base at this case we are assuming it as like that so this should be uh, earlier this was 50 millimeter 50 millimeter 200 millimeter 300 millimeter so 50 50 100 100 200 uh, 300 and 300 600 millimeters you have to provide here so i click ok I click apply first you will see now this is get updated so if you have any problem with the parameters so what these parameters doing you can click the sub assembly help so it will give you a help about these parameters and it will uh, show everything about parameters and you can get better understanding about that so i'll click ok now now my shoulder verge is also completed now i am going to add a daylight here so to add the daylight i'll go to here and from the tabs i will select daylight tab and select daylight bench from here and add it to here 
and I close this one and close this one as well and close this escape and I'll select this assembly sub assembly go to sub assembly properties now this is daylight bench R parameters would be cut slope I'll say 1.2 into 1 max cut height 6 meters fill slope 1.5 into 1 max fill height 6 meters I am just setting these parameters don't worry about the things and we are just learning how to apply things right these are the things we have to change and click ok so you know you don't see any update here so it will be updated while we are creating the corridor so now our left side this right side is completed now what we do is we have to do the same to the left side but uh, there's an easy way to do that since we have right and left most similar in our road so I'll select all these sub assemblies don't select the uh, assembly you have to only select the sub assembly make sure you have selected all these sub assemblies then click mirror here mirror and then it is asking the select the mirror line so you select this bottom of sit bottom area so all the things will be mirrored to the left side so i'll press keep now we have to do small modification at this stage that is changing the assembly name sub assembly names because they are referring to the right side so i am going to change the names i select here go to sub assembly properties changes to lane l and click ok again here lane l likewise i can change so if, without going to each of these assemblies if you go to select this assembly and go to assembly properties from here and go to the construction tab you will see your left side and you can easily double click here no not double click just a single click and you can change name and also if you need to change the parameters you can change the parameters from here as well like we did in the sub assemblies right okay now everything completed i am going to click ok here now we have completed our assembly to create the corridor so in the next section we will see how to create the corridor In this section, we are going to see how to create a corridor. We have already created an assembly. So using this assembly, we are going to create the corridor. So when creating the corridor, the interface for creating corridor is different if you are the with the version you are using to create the corridor. So if you are using a version like Civil 3D 2020, three or earlier the creation of corridor the window interface will be a little bit different from the version civil 3d 2024 so even if you use a, a updated or the a normal updated version of 2023 because civil 3d provides updates uh, at various intervals or various times of the year so if you have updated version of civil 3d 2023 so it will be similar to 2024 as well but if you have not updated civil 3d 2023 it will be similar to the uh, other versions uh, like civil 3d 2018 19 or up to 23 so i will be showing this in two various uh, software versions 2023 and 2024 because there are some modifications to the corridor creation interface so what basically happens in a corridor is we have this assembly here so we will be placing this assembly at certain intervals of this along this center line and create a 3d model of the road we will be applying assembly at certain intervals throughout this road and we will be creating a 3d model out of that to create our corridor so that is what basically happens in a corridor so to create the corridor i'll go here home tab corridor click this drop down create corridor and my corridor name 
I'll use the corridor name as two lane road corridor. So if you like, you can set a description here. Then you have to use this alignment and profile option because we are creating the corridor based on our alignment and profile. So our alignment is design center line. Make sure you have not selected any other offset assembly, offset alignment li lines. So you have to use select design center line and your profile would be the proposed one because we are creating the road based on our proposed profile. So your assembly would be two lane, two way road because we have only one assembly, but in actual uh, roadway modeling, you may have so many assemblies, but at this stage as a beginner in at the beginner interval, we will work with only one assembly and your target surface set it to E G then you will you should click ok and it will give you a window like this so this is how to create the corridor now see this is at the early stage so this is how to create the corridor uh, using trivial 3d 2023 uh, or earlier version so we will do one more modification here so that our corridor makes more accurate that is the frequency so i will make this frequency 10 meter all to get at everywhere and i will so 10 meter right so i am not going to change anything i will use the default version default items but this are so there are so many things related to these things but we are not going to i'm going to understand these things as a at as we are in the beginner level so i click ok so this is how to create the corridor uh using civil 3d 2023 or earlier versions so after that you can move on to create click ok and move on to the uh, corridor creation and create click rebuild corridor and i will remove this information notice so you will see something is created here so this is what we call corridor so we will see what is happening in a corridor in a later section so now i am moving on to civil 3d 2024 version and do the same thing but it is different than the civil 3d 2023 or earlier versions so here now i am in civil 3d 2024 i'll go to here create corridor same as earlier now this is your interface this is different from the earlier one so here you have to set the name similarly and you can set a description here and here you have to select your alignment so you click here it will show you all the alignments so you have to select design center line so it will automatically pop up the surface but you can select the correct one if it is not selected with the correct surface and your assembly you have to select this one so once you select the assembly you will be asked to select the target surface and you will select this uh, eg surface as your target and click ok so you will be having you will be directed to this properties parameters window so here we updated the frequency earlier so this time also we will set it to 10 meter interval and click ok and click ok and rebuild the corridor so you will be uh, having a corridor like this here so this is how to create the corridor in civil 3d now again we have something called uh, target setting in corridor so that means uh, now your center line is here and your corridor is created but you can see we had a uh, bus bay here now your corridor does not follow that bus bay you can see this is your lane, this is your shoulder, this is your verge. But inside the bus bay, it should go like this. Your shoulder should go like this along this bus bay. So it is not applied here. So in the next section, we will see 
how to set uh, target mapping so that we get a more accurate corridor with our layout of the road so in this section what we are going to do is we are going to set targets for our corridor so uh, before that i will uh, let you know why we need target again so i will select the corridor from here the one we created and if you need to turn off the corridor you can select the corridor right click and go to corridor properties from here and also from here on the ribbon you can go to corridor properties either way you go to corridor properties and your parameters tab parameters tab turn off this corridor from here this check mark button uncheck this one and click ok and rebuild the corridor so your corridor will be gone so some some of the notifications coming on but they are not much important because they are like information information notices so i click those from here so now i am in the civil 3d 2020 version so most of uh, the civil 3d versions are uh, followed by the target mapping with the older type target mapping rather than the 2024 version and 2023 version so first i will explain the older way and then i will explain the newer way in the civil 3d 22 2024 version so now i have a turn off the corridor you can see our lane is widening the actually the shoulder is widening at this stage for a bus bay so the corridor is not followed here you can see it clearly once we turn on the corridor so to turn on the corridor you go to prospector you go to corridors from here here expand the corridor then you can have the two lane road right click and go to corridor properties from here and turn on the corridor and click ok and rebuild the corridor now you will see corridor didn't follow the edge of the shoulder because this is your edge of the shoulder line this is the edge of the lane line so you can see the point code name at the bottom called lane and this is also a point code related to name but this is edge of the travel bay that is the uh, shoulder edge so you can see shoulder edge is like going like this but it should go like go like this so this is what is the what is this is the problem we are having here so we need to rectify that so to do that i click the corridor here then go to corridor properties then go to targets i select the last row which are we, where i need to select the, the corridor targets then go to target here so in the targets you have two types of targets surface targets and width targets so in here actually three target types surface target width target and slope elevation targets so uh, surface target is already set uh, and width target we have to set to follow the width of the road and slope elevation target we are not going to use and it is uh, very hardly used uh, in uh, normal activities so with target so what we do is we are telling civil 3d to follow a target instead of the width given by the assembly in the assembly we give a width like 3.5 for the lane edge and uh, from that edge we are giving one meter for the shoulder edge likewise but instead of following that width we are selecting a line so that corridor follows that line as the width so here for the right side i said this i click here to set that target so the right side we have the right lane edge so that is right 3.5 meter offset alignment that is refers to so if you have uh, if you do not have offset alignments for the layout so these things coming from the layout if you do not have offset alignments from the layout you might have sometimes poly lines and feature lines as the layout in that case you can 
select the correct feature line from the drawing like that so in our case i am going to use the alignment i will select the correct alignment for the lane edge then right click and add it to the target set so your lane r now followed right 3.5 so click ok now shoulder r then it should be this one so if you cannot find this one there's another way you can click here click here to find that one and using the lines here so uh currently you can cannot see here because you have to turn on the object uh, selection cycling so i'll press escape for the moment and i will go with this way but later i will show if you turn on the selection cycling as i told you earlier you can select that one from the selection cycling menu so i'll click add here and click ok then shoulder with target verge we don't have any target because we only uh, had the layout for lane and shoulder only so you don't have to set any targets here and for the left one we'll select left 3.5 and and right left 3.5 minus one that means for shoulder edge for the target and i am going to click ok after setting all these things and you will see now once i click ok and rebuild the corridor now you will see your corridor now follows that line you can see now the corridor with this also followed by the line in the uh layout so now you can see a lot earlier you don't see this type of shape now you will see this uh, transition line and everything followed by the corridor so this is how you create a more accurate corridor with civil 3d using the targets so i will now move on to civil 3d 2024 version to uh, do the same targeting but with a uh, different method so now i am now i am in civil 3 2024 so i am going to show you how to do the targeting with that one so i click the corridor here go to corridor properties from here and go to parameters tab then i select the last show which i am going to set the targets and click targets so you will end up with this kind of window not like earlier so the two types of targets you have offset target tab and surface target tab so surface target tab, tab we have already set surface target means you have to set the eg target always most of the cases actually so i go to offset and elevation targets so now you have to select the targets according to the uh, criteria so first we have the lane l and we are going to set the width targets so i will maximize this column to see it properly so we are going to set only the width target so if i click here it will give you what are the options if you have polylines you can select from here if you have alignments you can select from here so in this case for the width target my left width is i'll maximize this one left width line is I'll go down, maximize it, this one. So I'll click here. That is my left width. Then I move to the right one. So I select here. This is the right one. And I'm going to the shoulder left side target width. So this time, instead of going here, I will show, select it from here. Click here and this is my width target for the shoulder because it is going on a transition for the bus so i'll click here and right click click here or right click or press end now it will automatically select the line here you can now see it is already selected now you go to the right side and i'm going to show it select it again from the menu so it will be this is the lineage this is the shoulder so if you have turn on this selection cycling you will see it from here this alignment so now it is found now you can see it is selected at the bottom now everything is set so i can 
click OK now and click OK again and rebuild the corridor. So it will give you the same corridor like earlier with the target sets. So what really happens is instead of the width given by the assembly, the Civil 3D corridor will follow these lines as they are width targets. That's what really happens here. So now our corridor is completed. So if you click this corridor and go to object viewer from here, you will be able to see kind of a 3D model of the road. It's little, little, not easy to do that, but if you, you can see here, this is kind of a 3D model of the road. So that is created uh, using the uh, assembly we uh, created earlier. So there are so many things to do with corridors, but as a beginner, we are not going to learn everything. So that is what really happens in corridor. So in the next section, we will see how to create corridor surfaces. In this section, we are going to see how to uh, create corridor surface. Uh, so create corridor surface means we are creating the uh, top surface of this corridor. Uh, this is basically used for the display in cross sections. So uh, to do that, we will select the corridor from here then go to corridor properties and go to surfaces tab from here then click this option and I will rename my corridor two lane two way two lane road corridor top and it is a surface so it is automatically setting a style for that one but I am setting display on border only and you have to specify this code as top and have a check mark here and overhang correction make it top links and go to the boundaries tab after that then here right click and go to corridor extent as boundary and click ok and rebuild the corridor you will be having a corridor surface here so here we have this corridor surface it represent the top surface top end of your corridor if you if i explain it more clearly what happens is it will connect all these two top points across the corridor and create a surface right so i have selected that corridor top if you go to object viewer from here you will see how your road look like so this is similar to the road we are creating so this is the road we are creating this is the top part of your corridor so i press keep right so once you create the corridor uh, you can do some other things as well we will see in uh, our next section In this section, we are going to see some possible corridor warnings and errors that would be coming when you are designing corridors. So if you have some error, something, if something need to be updated in a corridor, it will show you in the prospector. If you expand this corridor, you will see there's a kind of a warning sign. You, your corridor is out, outdated. You need to uh, rebuild the corridor. So. <coughs> To rebuild the corridor, you have to right click and rebuild the corridor. So I'll rebuild in this case. So what happens here is it shows me two warnings from 0 to 1465 target object not found target DTM offset elevation. So like that is gives me a warning. So this type of warning is related to your surface target is not set your surface target is not set so i'll close this one so if you want to remove these clear these uh, warnings you can 
click action and clear all events so when i close this one now i am going to see my targets whether it is set correctly so i go to here and go to corridor so i am using the 2024 version so here i am going to the targets from here so if you are using the 2020 version or 23 or uh, 22 version like so your target surface target may not be like this but you have you can i hope you can find it so your surface target now you it is not set you can see here it is not set it is set to none that is why it is giving a uh, warning label and uh, the corridor is outdated because of that one so i'll set this one eg now it is set at both cases so these two sides is for left and right you can see here left and right so i click ok and click ok to rebuild my corridor now when we re rebuilding the corridor no error will happen that means our corridor is uh, modeled correctly now here again i am going to see show you another error we are encounter with so in this time i set my targets in my corridor using offset alignments on the left side but for the offset alignment we have, you know we don't have any offset alignment on the right side instead we have poly lines on the right side to uh, set our corridor uh, actually set our layout so we'll see what kind of error we get at this moment so i'll right click go to proto properties and i will set my corridor and you can see in the width target section now my right width target is set to a polyline on this side and right shoulder target also set to a polyline so i'll click ok and click ok here again to rebuild the corridor you will see an error pop-ups here up uh, error pop-ups target object not found with with object is not found i'll double click here it will show me some error so this event happening in two locations the, these two locations at the end actually this is at the end and the sub assembly is right and the sub assembly group is lane r so in a lane r at this station there's a error happens so i close this one and i'll clear the events for the moment now i am moving on to the right side so this is where my corridor is so what i'm going to do now is i'll click this one and turn off for the moment to check what happens at the layout so you can see in this location this layout alignments ends here but the right lane layout ends shorter than that that is why it is giving an error in this area the target cannot be found because this line is not here because civil 3d finds this target perpendicular to the alignments so somewhere here you don't any find any target so that gives you an error so you have to extend this line up to this end so that uh, it gives correct with target so i am going to extend this using the extend commands now i am extended it i don't know want this one actually and i will rebuild the corridor now and you won't see errors now right you won't see errors now because now it is correctly modeled so in we will see another uh, error in the next part so now there is a another rebuild required for the corridor so i am going to rebuild the corridor from here because the corridor is already created and is shown in the drawing so i'll rebuild this so you have two warnings at zero you don't have intersection target could not be found so this is one at zero intersection target could not be found and it shows you some error so we'll see what is the error here so it is a kind of a elevation error elevation error here so basically this type of uh, error relates to elevation error so the easiest way to find this is the error is at zero 
so easiest way is to select this corridor and if it is an elevation type error it is better to easier to find it through the object viewer so if you go to object viewer you will see now your corridor is looking like at this like this at the start we call it corridor waterfall right it is suddenly going down so that is because your profile is not connecting to the zero point of the alignment so i'll press escape so if i go to the profile you can see my profile starts not at zero but somewhere some point else right is one meter away from the zero right so you need to make this to the zero point using the object snaps right then the error would be gone this can happen at the other end also and that means this corner also so you have to make sure that this is connected to the edge as well so if i rebuild the corridor now you won't see any errors now right so this is these are some of the errors you will encounter when corridor modeling so if these uh, errors encountered if you found these type of errors uh, you can uh, rectify them to get a more accurate corridor in this section we are going to see how to create sample lines and finally the cross sections so to create sample lines, first we need to go to home tab go to sample lines so sample lines are created based on alignment so you need to select an alignment so it is uh, select it is telling in the command line select an alignment so you can press enter to select an alignment easily so you press enter and our alignment is center line alignment which we have sold the corridor information so click ok so it will tell you all the available data sources here to create the corridor uh, actually to create the sample lines so this is the corridor surface and this is the corridor if you see here this is the corridor surface this is the corridor so for the corridor surface we will select a separate style from here and click finish ground that is the style we are going to use this is the basic style and this is the existing ground style so we cl click ok we are not going to change anything we accept most of the thing as default we click ok it will pop up a small toolbar here sample line creation toolbar so there we are going to set up the sample lines so we have to go to here to create the sample lines and we tell by range of stations then it will pop up a new window so i am maximizing the window for easy viewing so we are creating sample lines from start to end if you want you can choose customize range so left sort which means how much to the left you are going to take data for your cross section from the center line and how much width we are going to use for the right side means by the right side for which then at what interval you need the cross section so section if it is 20 meter interval it is you have to select 20 meter if it is 10 meter likewise according to the requirement you have to set so we are not going to change anything then range start and range end means start of the corridor or corridor section end of the corridor or corridor section and others things are here i am not going to we are not going to set these things we are accepting the defaults and click ok now you will see your cross sections for sample lines are actually created now i am closing this toolbar so you can see your sample lines are created with labels so it's 0 20 40 likewise at 20 meter intervals it has been created so if you want to uh, turn off these labels you can click the sample line i one of any of the sample lines go to edit label group and click this section leave labels uncheck this one actually remove this one and you won't see any labels now you're only seeing the sample lines so at these locations we will be getting the cross section so if you click any sample line it will show you it is a sample line and the width is uh, sorry the station is 660 likewise so 
so when you are creating the sample line for the first time so you need to make sure you are selecting a width sort width more than the corridor width uh, with then then only you will be getting all the data from the corridor to the uh, cross section so section views so now i am going to create the section views so to do that i am selecting one sample line here and go to create section view go to create multiple section views but because we are going to create all the section views now so i go to create multiple section views then it is giving me just some op options to change if you like so if you want to get cross sections throughout the road you can use this option so if you want part of the corridor part of the sample lines you can use this one so i'm just moving here so instead of a plan production sheet you will be using this option as a start uh, because we are following a basic uh, program to get an idea about civil 3d as a beginner so I click, click next again so this is about the offset range that means the swath width and this is about elevation range we are not going to change anything at this stage so we are not going to change anything at this stage just go here and here also we have offset only data here so this time we will use major stations and offset elevations so for the eg elevations you have to select the uh, eg one so we will we are going to modify this later at the moment we will accept this as it is so these are actually bands of the cross section this area we will see what it is at the end so we create cross sections now it is asking to select a location to create the cross section we will click it somewhere here away from the profile and everything then you will see your cross sections now created so you can see now our cross sections are now created so since this is bit uh, ugly or not looking good I am going to change the scale here like 1 is to 250 so and then I will click any of these sections and go to update layout so we will be getting a better view right so now you have the cross section here so if you need you can change this uh, display so to do that you have to select one cross section and go to section view group properties from here click there then go to section step and under the corridor that means this one this is the corridor surface this is the corridor so go to change the style change it with view edit something like that click ok and click ok again so you will see everything with all the data and if you like again i will go here we, we can use view edit with, sorry view edit with shading this one so it will have the uh, layer thicknesses shown straight away so i click ok here so now you can see this is your road this is the layers we have this is the slopes we adopted minus 2.5 and this is the shoulder slope minus 4 and these are the elevations at various intervals so at the H you will have this type kind of elevation using that one so what really happens is you have this section like here so when you have the slope like here it will set you the daylight this is called the daylight we added at the end and if you move on to another section some which is on top of the ground you will see it more clearly sometimes here here you can see when the when the when this point is over the top of existing ground this is the existing ground so it will slope down until the existing ground if it is below the existing ground it will slope up until the existing ground so that is about the cross sections then we are going to 
update this band so that we are getting the correct information so to do that i will click, click one of the cross sections then go to view group properties then i am going to section view step from here i will drag this to get more clear view then i will select this change band style click here and on the bands so our first one is existing elevation so we have to set this existing elevation existing elevation is given by the eg surface so i have to set this to as eg then i have the proposed elevation it is given by the corridor surface like here corridor surface offsets uh, it's better to use the eg one it is okay to use either one but i suggest you to use the eg one and we click ok and click ok again so now you will see all the cross sections are populated with data so now we can see we have uh, minimum data here uh, because of the uh, I think some uh, weeding error so we will see what the problem here so actually this is the offsets are shown at 10 meter intervals that is the problem so instead to solve the issue I will go to here and go to here and I will change this match major increments and I will make this 2.5 intervals this both of these as 2.5 intervals so your data will be displayed at 2.5 intervals from the center line so i click ok here and i click ok here again now you can see your data will be shown at 2.5 intervals right you can see here so some of the data is going outside because of the scale but uh, actually you can see the required data here uh, so you have the existing so you have the center line and existing elevation everything here so your offset is 0 and your proposed elevation is 14.6 your uh, modified elevation is uh, uh, existing ground elevation is 14.2 likewise you have all this data and also at the top you have the data here as well so this is how to create cross sections so that completes the beginner uh, program of civil 3d i hope you have get more understanding about creating cross sections uh, so you can practice more uh, with cross sections in the uh, with more advanced knowledge if you follow these things very uh, thoroughly so once you have completed the beginner tutorial to how to road design with civil 3d you have in my youtube channel you have some kind of a advanced even though this is for beginners this is kind of advanced uh, set of tutorial which i did for youtubers so after following that one you can use this for more understanding especially for corridor sections and creating cross sections and material calculations also included here in this course I, in this video actually i will be using a separate template to do everything but uh, i will not provide the template with this free tutorial in youtube but if you want to uh, get the tu uh, template and get more much more understanding about civil 3d you can enroll into my road design course with civil 3d in udemy uh, it is so you have to pay some price for this one but actually uh, in this course i am teaching you a lot more things and i will be offering you you two free tutorials two free courses for you to follow for civil 3d alignments and civil 3d corridors uh, that is very useful courses so even though this price is so high uh, you frequently get uh, offers from udemy like you can purchase this uh, about a price of 12 dollars or 13 dollars so 
uh, if you want to get the template and get more understanding more depth understanding you can purchase my course on uh, udemy.com so those are the advanced resources you can use to improve your knowledge with uh, civil 3d uh, so i hope you will find these things very useful and i hope you will have a, a good future with uh, civil 3d software and road design with civil 3d